you very much, Joel. I appreciate you um, turning the microphone over to me. Welcome, all of you. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. We do have a great program planned for you. And I do want to thank, first, the Issues Committee, who is very instrumental in helping to put this together. On that Issues Committee is Joanne Van Tassel. We have Constance Cumby, Mary Ann Henry, Dave Azunian. Come on, Dave. And myself. So thank you all for, for all the work that you've done in advance of tonight's event. The primer, primer that was handed out at the table was consolidated by information that Joanne has put together as part of the, tonight's presentation, as well as information that she helped collect with, uh, with Constance Cumby. So again, I want to thank them for all the effort that they did and going to get that printed for all of us. So this mail sales tax, sales tax. We have this chunk of road, um, collected it from another event that we had recently. And we all want to say, why? Why did our roads get this bad? And how are we going to get it fixed so we don't have pieces of road sitting around for us to be able to pick up and collect like this? So tonight's a very important piece for us to understand how our roads got here, what's going to be done to fix them, and what our options are as voters here in Oakland County. For tonight, we have uh, several things that we're going to do. Uh, Joanne's going to go through a series of slides uh, before the panelists start to speak and uh, give you just some basic background about the tax um, ballot initiative that's on the May 5th ballot. Then we're going to let each of the panelists go through and give a presentation on the no's, uh, the pro and the con. With a flip of the coin, the con side gets to go first, so they will be presenting their material first, and then we'll have the pro side do that. You have on your table index cards and little pencils. We're going to be taking questions from you. You get to ask the questions tonight. Um, find out what your, what your issues are relative to this ballot initiative. I'm going to tell you from right now that we, I will be asking questions on uh, how did we get to $1.2 billion? Why isn't the money all going to roads instead of all these other initiatives? What are the 11 other bills that are being that are going to have to be pa that will pass when this uh, initiative is pa if it is passed? So this way you don't have to ask those questions. Ask the other questions that you might have relative to the sales tax uh, ballot initiative, and this way we can make sure we get to all of them. We're keeping it open tonight for as long as we can get through your questions. We're hoping that by you know, 8.30, quarter to 9, we might be able to wrap it all up. But we want to make sure that your questions are answered this evening. So that's how we're going to go through uh, for this evening. We'll do Joanne first. I'm going to bring, have Joanne Ta Van Tassel come up and go through her slide presentation. And then we will turn it over to our panelists. So Joanne. Is this is this is just some basic background information on what the problem is and what the proposed solution is. It does not take a stand in favor or opposed either way. <coughs> problem. Michigan roads and highways have been neglected for far too long. Current fuel taxes don't keep pace because of the more efficient vehicles. There's too much need, too little money. Michigan has paid for roads with a tax on fuel and registration fees. You can see MDOT revenue back in 2007-08 was almost a million nine. It's a little over a million nine in the current fiscal year. That's about a 2% increase over the past seven years, or three tenths of 1% per year. Uh, imagine trying to run your household on that kind of an increase. Okay. Uh, where does MDOT spend the revenue? MDOT get some, the road commissions get some, and cities and villages get some. Uh, a billion, almost six in 2007, 08, to a, uh, almost a billion nine this year. That's about a 12% increase, or 1.75. So what's the picture with the Road Commission for Oakland County? 
the road commission in 0708 had 107 million dollars this year they're down to 98 million eight percent loss or about a 1.2 percent loss each year on their expenditures they were spending 111 million in 0708 now they're down to this current year 100 million about a 10 percent loss how do they make up the difference they use their fund balance that fund balance isn't going to last forever the current michigan gas tax the feds have 19 percent the state are 19 cents the state has 19 cents and then you pay a six percent sales tax on the price you pay if you're paying two dollars a gallon then that's an additional 12 cents that doesn't go to roads it goes to schools municipalities and other state spending um, all the way up if you're paying three dollars a gallon that's 18 cents so you can see that the sales tax money does not go to fund roads and that's the problem they want to eliminate that sales tax on gas which means a loss of revenue to schools municipalities and the state okay proposal one it amends the state constitution first of all it exempts your motor fuels from the state sales tax they increase the sales tax from six percent to seven percent realize because of proposal a back in 94 that two percent of the sales tax is automatically dedicated to the school aid fund which leaves the other five percent open for use sixty percent of that goes to um, schools and uh, from the sales tax and from the use tax that's about a two hundred dollar per pupil increase to schools and it dedicates 15 percent of that five percent to revenue sharing for cities villages and townships if the ballot proposal passes the following laws go into effect and if you picked up a copy of the firmer it's on the back page so i'm not going to read all of these but you can see that one it exempts gasoline and diesel fuel from the sales tax it converts the 19 cents a gallon gas tax and the 15 cent fuel tax to 14.9 percent of the average wholesale price if you read through that legislation and can understand it you get an a <laughs> It increases the earned income tax credit from 6% to 20%. It increases vehicle registration fees for electric powered uh, cars and eliminates, quote, the depreciation of rates for cars, vans, and trucks. If you bought a new car and you paid based on the value of that car, right now, the next year, you get a 10% reduction. The next year after that, you get, I believe, a 10% reduction after that they have eliminated that so you're paying on that price of the full price of the car with your registration fees yeah. um, it requires local road agencies to competitively bid projects and implement performance-based maintenance um, and some of this relates to the state some of it relates to road commissions um, it requires warranties um, it implements the use tax it uh, amends the motor carrier fuel tax act to be consistent with other legislation and it appropriates 40 million from the school aid fund for at-risk programs um, the tax on gasoline and fuel at the new wholesale price is expected to generate about 1.2 billion in the first year 800 million used to pay down transportation debt this is for bonds that were issued in the past to take care of our roads it uses the other 400 million to go to road agencies mdot your local road commissions um, the next year it's just the opposite they use 400 million to pay down the debt and 800 million goes to road agencies and starting in october of 2017 the full one point Two billion would go to road agencies um, if this passes from 2015 onward you've got a 300 million dollar uh, donation to school aid fund that's the 200 dollars per pupil 
You've got 130 million for public transportation and 95 million for revenue sharing for local municipalities. Is this a good deal? That's for you people to decide. And that's why we have people here tonight to speak about this both in favor and opposed. Teresa? Thank you very much, Joanne. So with that, we're gonna remind you again, um, there's index cards on your table and little pencils. Please make sure you write your questions down on the cards. Joanne and Mary Ann Henry will be coming around to pick up the questions and then we'll go through I'll those questions to ask the panelists. As I mentioned before, they have uh, flipped a coin. And the con, pro, con, pro is what uh, Joanne said, right? Okay, so we're going con, pro, con, pro. Yes. And they each get seven minutes to present their material. So I am going to introduce uh, Tom McMillan, who is our first speaker. Tom is the current 8th District Congressional District Chairman and the former state representative from the 45th uh, State House. He um, it has a bachelor's degree from the University of Michigan and works as a CPA. He was previously mayor of Auburn Hills and a member of the Oakland County Commission. He is the honorary chairman of the Concerned Taxpayers of Michigan, a ballot commi uh, question committee opposing the proposal to raise the state taxes on May 5th. Uh, Tom is married to Dalila and they have three daughters. And with that, Tom. <laughs> Well, thank you very much uh, for coming, and thank you, Gogop, for uh, setting this up. I always like to start with a um, quote. About a month ago, Governor Snyder said uh, to Gongwer News Service, if voters go out and defeat a tax increase, individual legislators are going to be more hesitant to support a tax increase. <laughs> I like that. That sounds good to me, right? So, uh, you know, the, the roads, nobody disagrees. Nobody uh, has any doubt that the roads are bad. But like uh, has been presented, 40% of this $2 billion does not go to roads. I think that's one of the most compelling arguments is that we are voting on something that was cobbled together um, overnight. I, I came in, uh, Brad and I were there, and I came in at 10 o'clock in the morning, session opened up on the day, the last day of session during lame duck, and uh, we basically sat around for about 10 hours while people were in the back rooms cutting deals and deciding and cobbling this together. The bills came out at about five in the morning and we voted on these 10 bills at around five o'clock in the morning. Um, and you know, this proposal looks like something that was cobbled together uh, late at night and voted on uh, just before everybody went home. Um, you know, it has 46,000 words. If you, a yes vote will implement 46,000 words. Now, granted, there's a few decent bills in there. There's some good bills. Those could be passed, with the, even if this fails, those could certainly be passed. And those that are pr proposing uh, various uh, credible alternatives are suggesting that there are some that should uh, go into effect and, and be uh, on the governor's desk immediately. But it does include, like was mentioned, the $300 million additional. They had to get Democrat support. So, you know, I've read, uh, I don't know about you, but I sometimes read the MichiganLiberal.com. I like to see what the liberals are thinking. And they proclaimed, we ran the board. I mean, you know, they still don't like it because they don't want, uh, you know, to support the governor and they don't like, uh, you know, increasing the taxes. Uh, you know, uh, sales taxes, but they said, you know, it, you got to you got to give them credit. The Democrats ran the board. I mean, they wanted more money for uh, schools. They got 300 million more. They wanted more money for low income, uh, basically welfare uh, payments. They got 260 million more. They needed. They wanted a reading program. They got 40 million more. They wanted a study. You know, this is one thing. They took Senator Colbeck's bill. He had a bill that would require schools to uh, teach some of, or actually urge schools to teach some of the Constitution. And so, uh, lo and behold, that bill comes up on the board. People are all voting yes. And uh, Martin Howerlack, Representative Howerlack, and I looked at the bill, and they had completely taken every word of it out at five in the morning and put instead, um, you know, a study that Democrats were wanting that other Democrats in other states have used to kind of argue for more and more funding uh, for public schools and kind of going after uh, charter schools. So they got that as well. They also got an increase in affirmative action requirements for MDOT contracts um, if this passes as well. So they certainly ran the board. Uh, this, this proposal uh, would, would increase taxes by about $200 and fees by about $200 per person. An average family of four is gonna pay an additional $800. One thing that was not in those 10 bills was a bill to cut. There was no cutting, there was, in, the, there was no interest. You know, we have a $53 billion budget 
and uh, there was no, no interest in trying to reprioritize. What they want to do is force families to reprioritize our spending. They don't want to do the heavy work, the tough work, of reprioritizing Lansing spending. What they want to do is force families to have less money and so that they have to reprioritize. Now, when the governor ran initially, I forget my water, when the governor ran initially as a candidate, I was pretty excited about it. He, as a, a fellow CPA, he was talking about value for money budgeting. And that just means uh, that, you know, government will go in and figure out, we would figure out what we're getting for the dollar spent. So how, what is the result? What are the outcomes? That's not something Lansing wants to do. And, and no vote, I, I will tell you, if, if we vote no and this goes down, it's going to be pretty exciting because already Senator Colbeck, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, the Senate Majority Leader, Mikoff, has said, uh, he was quoted in CapCon a couple days ago saying, <clears throat> this goes down, you know, I've told the fellow, my fellow legislators to cancel your summer plans. And basically he was saying, we're going to get to work. We're going to do our job. We're going to actually prioritize spending. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, there's, uh, you know, the other sites we'll talk about, there's no credible plan. Certainly, uh, Senator Colbeck is talking about, you know, reprioritizing. He also, by the way, is, uh, he's an actual rocket scientist. I, you know, he, people say it's not rocket science. He's actually used to work for NASA. He's a brilliant engineer. And he also says that not only do we need to reprioritize, and we certainly can, $53 billion, there is, the general fund has gone up, and that's kind of the money that they can use that's uh, not restricted. Uh, that's gone up from $8.3 billion when uh, Governor Snyder took office and we took control, it's gone up from 8.3 to 10.1 billion. Uh, so there's, you know, just the general fund, the money that is not called for uh, or not restricted, that's gone up $1.8 billion. And as a matter of fact, the, the new governor of Illinois, who is a Republican, has called for, lo and behold, a freeze on spending. And a freeze on all spending and, and putting that into roads is one of the things that Senator Colbeck and others are talking about doing. Let's, you know, make sure, where has that $1.8 billion gone? I mean, back in the, the bad days uh, of Granholm, the average household income went down by 25% in Michigan, and yet got Michigan uh, government spending went up. Uh, you know, it's, it is time that they also make sure that they can, you know, tighten their belt. And really, the yes side has a very difficult proposal. They have to argue that they've cut to the bone. And I don't think anybody actually thinks, does, it, does anybody actually think that they've cut to the bone? I don't think anybody does. And, uh, you know, I got 60 seconds. I want to say that one thing that's really interesting, and those of you that have been involved in the Republican Party politics, not one Republican group has come out in support of Proposal 1. And this is, you know, governor, which I think our governor's done many good things, no doubt. But it's unusual, and, and by the way, there's been about seven congressional districts and 16 county Republican parties that have come out against Proposal 1. And this is, again, something that's very unusual. There's a lot of uh, other things we could talk about. Uh, it's clear that polling shows the more people understand about the ballot, the more likely they are to vote no. I think that's a very telling and very interesting. And there were a lot of problems. Uh, you know, they forgot that uh, the hundred million dollars that is no longer going to be tax deductible. We're going to pay an extra hundred million dollars to the federal government if this passes, because our car registration fees will no longer be tax, tax deductible. So they get an extra hundred thousand, a uh, hundred million, and uh, mass transit gets an extra hundred million. Those big empty buses, and there's plenty of other problems uh, that we could talk about during the Q and A. So thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. So I think I have about 30 questions that have come in already, and I was going to say, they're not all the same. So we do have a lot of questions to go through this evening. And who's our first pro speaker? I think it's Eric. It's you? All right. So Eric Wilson is the vice chairman of the um, Road Commission of Oakland County. He was appointed to the board in January 2007 and reappointed in January 2013. But he's been in public service for quite some time. Prior to joining RCOC, um, he was Commissioner Wilson served two terms on the Oakland County Board of Commissioners, and prior to that, he served as the Orion Township Trustee for nine years and was a member of the Township Zoning Board of Appeals for 10 years. He is a Vietnam vet, as well as uh, currently an attorney in private practice and active in many civic organizations here in Orion County co community. Thank you, Teresa. I want to thank everybody for putting this on tonight. Go GOP. You know, I feel like I'm uh, trying to sell Ice Cube's Eskimos here. 
and I don't think I'm, it's just a very difficult sale. And I think Tom has laid out some bad things about this proposal, and there's no question about it. But let me ask you just a couple of questions. Can you name two good roads in our own township? Or in your own township? I already told you, you don't count. Other in front of this nice establishment we're in, and the other one over in front of the post office. And maybe in front of Eva's. By the way, it's open, so if you want to get over here and get an ice cream, please do. <laughs> Support our local businesses. But, and there's a couple other things. One, most of us, a lot of us have newer cars, and the economy's taken up, we haven't had touch screens. Have you, have you been driven on your, driving on the Michigan bump yet? Have you had the Michigan bump? When you go to hit the touch screen, and you want to listen to Paul W. or Frank Beckman in the morning, and you end up with hot futures and Canadian weather? Has that happened to you yet? Huh? That's happened to me several times. And that's what's going on with our roads. Are the roads bad? I'm glad to hear Tom agrees that the roads are bad. You know, we're a pretty, we have a very unhealthy and very, excuse me, very healthy distrust of politicians. Do we not? I mean, it, we all know it. We don't trust them. And what Tom is suggesting to us is that we, since we don't trust them, we'll send it back to Lansing and we have the faith that they're gonna do better. I, I don't have that faith. I go to Bible class and I just don't have that faith for them. So I, good luck if that happens. Well, let's go, Ross, go ahead, Ross. Our future well additional road funding. This is an actual road out in White Lake Township. Go ahead, Ross. Rose, here's our cold patch. You know, the other contractor that will be making money, Lowe's and Home Depot. And every time you drive under one of the MDOT bridges, just look up and you see the paneling and you see the issues going on, what do you think they're getting at? From the hardware store or the lumber department at Lowe's and Home Depot. Here's why our roads are bad. We've been spending money on health, education, and welfare. We're number 50th in the state, or in the country. If Guam and Puerto Rico counted, we'd be 53rd. That's where we spend per capita on road funding. Here's the bad road, or the good roads we had from 10,000 feet in 06. This is Oakland County right now in the red. That's, and we're just talking here, the roads for the Road Commission for Oakland County. Those are roads that are in poor condition. Proposal one, keep going Russ, everybody knows what they are. I don't have to tell you what proposal one is. You all know what it is. This is constitutional guarantees, and you either like it or don't like it. it eliminates the sales tax, converts to 19 cents. Now the gas price would go up, probably no more than four, three or four, maybe six cents a gallon. So the gas is not gonna go up. Where the rub is, and this is where we all have the rub is, the sales tax jumping. Fuel taxes cannot rise or fall dramatically. There's an annual floor and ceiling. That is very true. Raises the sales tax six to seven, and the other things goes. Now, let me say this. You may have, schools, Teachers are not, I don't consider teachers a special interest group. I consider the MEA a special interest group, and I have my disagreements with them. But the teachers take care of our kids, our grandkids, and they, they do. So I don't have a problem with teachers. It's the MEA I have a problem. The impact for transportation agencies, there's a difference what we would receive totally. Keep going. By the way, if they, when they raised the taxes last time, gas tax in 1997, if they'd index it to inflation, we would not be here today to have that discussion. We'd still, we would have the 1.2 billion right now. And by the way, who here knows the gas tax, what it is in Ohio? Somebody's got, got to know it. I know I know it. Anybody here know it? It's 28 cents a gallon. It's only 19 here in Michigan. What about, keep, let's go to the next one. Trucks, trucks will pay more. <coughs> Next one. If this does not pass. I consider the proposal that I'm hearing impossible from Lansing. Whether we're going to send it back to Lansing, that is impossible, illusionary, and invisible. Why? Five years the Republicans have had control. Five years. And this is the best we've got for road funding. Five years. True. And I'm a conservative Republican. This is the best we've got. 
No, I'm not happy, but that's what we have. <clears throat> it's intangible because you are never going to drive on a road for any proposal that's going to fix these roads. Because we're not going to see anything. Invisible is this money's never going to come. Mr. McMillan talks about money here, money there. You know, everybody that has been up there has had a chance to show leadership <coughs> and get these bills passed necessary for road money. That's not happening. Keep going. We've got a couple more seconds. This is what it costs for the road commission. This is what we get additional revenue. Keep going. Here's where we would spend it. Right to the roads. Go ahead. Sales tax. I just want you to understand. I don't make these up. This is just, this is the stats. Wisconsin, sales tax is lower, but their gas tax is 30 cents a gallon. You can see what the other states are, Russ. And I'll let uh, Representative Brad, Jack, Brad Jacobson take care of the rest. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. Do you so, want this? That's my... I may need this. Well, no, no, that's, my, need, that's my souvenir. This. We need this for to fix the road. No, no, <laughs> you, you can't fix it with that. I want to know how it fell out in the first place. We'll get to that question later. All right, our next con speaker for this, for this evening is Norm Hughes. Norm is a lifelong active member of the Republican Party, a successful entrepreneur and architectural engineer. His 30-year-old architectural firm, Unique Design and Build, designs and manages award-winning commercial building projects. In his long service to the Republican Party, he has been a delegate to the National Convention, a presidential elector to the Electoral College, a two-time Republican nominee for U.S. Congress, Executive Director for the Michigan Reagan for President, Assistant to Assistant Secretary of U.S. Department of Energy, Senior Policy Advisor for FEMA, Presidential Spokesperson on the, the member of the White House Speakers Bureau, Co-author of Michigan's Landmark Tax Limitation Amendment, and instrumental in working on the Right to Work legislation that passed in 2012. With that, we'll turn it over to Norm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, two or three, um, I've got a lot of slides here. Some of the material's already been covered, and some of it really is their responsibility to explain this proposal. So we'll flip through them fairly quickly. Uh, two major points I want to make to you tonight. Number one is we're not spending too little. We're not taxing too little. I'll throw a few slides up here showing you how the taxes have increased under Republican leadership over the last seven years, how the budget has gone up. I can also tell you, as an architectural engineer who specified hundreds of millions of dollars worth of roads, parking lots, parking structures, that the MDOT process is doomed to fail. It's uh, designing roads for 50-year life with cars, but then puts super-duty trucks on it, higher than any other uh, weight limit in, in the country, so far as I know. So that's tearing down our roads, and we're getting fairly poor uh, response from that. Moreover, our budget is blown by prevailing wage, which is costing us $400 million a year. And uh, I've met with the Lieutenant Governor before he was even elected, uh, and I met with the Governor December of uh, 2012, and I laid out for them both a proposal using professional uh, assistance um, on how we could fix these roads without raising taxes. And the will is not there. So we're gonna to try to go through these real quickly. The budget has uh, gone up uh, considerably, going rest, uh, $7 billion in, over the last uh, six years, a, a tremendous increase. Go ahead, please. Um, go ahead. And uh, you can see the personal income tax has increased 47% over the last five years. That's personal income tax. The per capita revenue has gone up 26%. Uh, Not too little money. We got more money. These are some of the tax increases that have gone on. Hunting, fishing, garbage fees, uh, medical devices, fuel tax, uh, 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 just all kinds of increases. And meanwhile, the, go ahead. Uh, meanwhile, the debt has accumulated. We've got $143 billion debt. It, the budget has gone up a quarter of a million, or a quarter of a billion dollars on roads each of the last three years, and it's all going to pay off debt from the roads that were built in the Engler administration. It hasn't gone to fixing the roads. Next, please. 
education is 35 percent of the budget health so on you don't even see roads in there it's not a major item on the budget next please as the ed education budget's gone up the road budget's been flatlined pretty much over decades now decades next please Meanwhile, as the enrollment has gone down under the Granholm administration, you can see the budget was parallel, going down in education and corresponds with the student population. The Republicans got in, we've blown out the education budget. We bought into the schism or the theory that we can't spend enough money on education. Go ahead, please. Here you see education spending going up, uh, student population, student teacher ratio going down, quality flatlined. We're not getting quality for what we're spending on that, but we keep throwing more and more money at it. This proposal will throw another $300 million a year at it. Uh, the, the budget, uh, this is taken just uh, not even a year ago when uh, gas was three forty one dollars a gallon. You can see the total taxes were $0.59 cents a gallon. We spend the same amount per road mile in repairs as Indiana does. They're rated top in the country, we rated as 43rd. And we're not getting value for the money we're spending. Next, please. Um, I, I think we better keep going here. Um, and if, if the, the total revenue sharing has gone up $1.2 billion, but this proposal throws even more at it, $357 million a year in perpetuity, increasing the rate of inflation. It's a blowout budget. It's unbelievable the way they think that we can spend this kind of money. The, uh, go ahead, we covered that. Uh, prevailing wage, $10 an hour higher than private sector prevailing wage. If you have a pr contractor paving this side of the sidewalk for the, for the state, that side of the sidewalk for Myers, both union contractors, the state side is $10 an hour higher. It's in the state law. It's been challenged in the courts and turned down. This is a this is this can be solved legislatively, but they don't solve any problems like this. They just keep on throwing more on it. Prevailing wage will save four hundred million dollars a year, two hundred twenty-four million dollars a year in just school construction, and the quality of the contracts will even be better because there'll be more competition. Uh, this is all. This is uh, uh, and here at maturity, maybe one point two billion will go to the roads. What really happened was MDOT says we, not about, we need about $500 million more road money. But under a 1951 formula, predating the state constitution, we have a formula in there that says 39.8% goes to state, 398 to county, 282 to locals. So in order to get $469 million on the state roads, they kick it up to $1.2 billion to be able to get $469 million to county roads needed or not, voted on or not, and uh, the 20, $261 million for the locals. Our county turned down the millage for roads last year. My brother lives in Grand Traverse. They passed when he's paying $1,300 a year more in, in, in uh, property taxes. That's where it should be solved. If Oakland County needs more road money, don't come up and get it from us, us in Lapeer County or people in Ogemaw County. Decide for yourself how much it should be solved on the local level, closest to the people. Is that not a Republican principle? Yes. Next, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, yeah, go ahead. So anyway, if it's really about safety, can we take any out of the $53 billion budget? As a matter of fact, they have. This year, they've increased road funding $661 million, but not a bit of it's going to fix roads. It's going to mass transit. It's going to overhead, it's going to uh, uh, paying off debt. Not a penny of it's going to fixing and improving the roads. So, I, go ahead. I'm working. Um, and on top of that, we're going to go ahead and give the cities and villages $357 million in revenue sharing money as part of this scheme. I, I, go ahead, Russ. Um, really, when it gets right down to it, Merely 21% and its maturity of the $2.2 billion will be taxing will go into MDOT roads. 21%. And this first year, next please, only 160 million or 7%. Don't tell me we got a crisis that's coming through your windshield and spend only 7% of the tax on fixing the roads. Yeah. Next year it goes up to 14%. 
It's deception, it's a lie, and I'm offended by it. Yeah. I'm offended that our party and its leadership is trying to sell us garbage. Really. Meanwhile, they're going to spend $70 million on a new Senate office building. Okay, now, um, yes. No questions for the floor. Okay. I'm going to show you a couple, three slides here about what's, what's going to happen um, when this passes. There's, it, it automatically increases at the rate of sales, in uh, the, the cost of uh, fuel, the wholesale cost. So whatever our tax is going to be is going to be at the whim of OPEC and at the whim of inflation and other things. Okay, so Norm, we'll let you show those slides during the Q&A part, but we've given you your, okay. your time. I'm sorry. Got to let okay. the other side have your thoughts. Right. And our last of our panelists is Representative Brad Jacobson. He is the current state rep from District 46. He was first elected in November 2010 and represents the residents of Oakland in Oakland County, including Oxford, Orion, part of Oakland Township, Addison, and Brandon Townships. He received his bachelor's degree in social economic policy from James Madison College at Michigan State University. He's also the vice president of Jacobson's Flowers, a family-run company founded by his grandfather in 1920. Um, Brad has, was raised in Oxford, still lives here with his wife Terry, and has three children. They attend the Oxford United Methodist Church, and he is an active member of the Oxford Rotary, the local Elks and Eagles Clubs. Representative Jacobson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Teresa. This is Eric's slide, not mine, so I've got to... Yeah. Um, you come from the state south? Yeah. Let's look at this just real briefly while, while it's up here. This is part of our state budget here. It shows what we spend on transportation. But we really need to look at what, you know, we hear about from some of the folks here about how our budget has grown and how it's, you know, over the last few years. Well, it has grown some. State economy's been better. Sales tax revenues have come up. We put more sales tax money into the roads. But look at the rest of the budget here. We hear 50, oh, you got a $53 million budget, and you can't come up with $1.2 million for the roads. When you take that, that uh, 53, it's actually less than that this, this year, it's around 52 with the adjustments we had to make in the last month and a half. About 10% of that, uh, about 10 million, is general fund money. General fund money means that's money that we really have control over. The rest of that money, the vast majority of it, is restricted funds. Those are funds that either by federal mandate come to the state and we have to spend them on federal programs, um, welfare programs, uh, food in the school programs, um, Medicaid, a whole variety of different federal programs that we get money for. Those are the restricted funds programs. So out of the 50, let's say 53 using their numbers, about 10 of that we have some control over. One third of that, 35%, about three, three and a half billion of that money, is what we have to use to draw down part of this matching funds. So for example, if we put money into airports, state money into airports, we get 10, I believe it's either eight or $10 federal dollars for every one Michigan dollar we put in. That's the idea with matching funds. So. About one third of that goes to matching funds to draw in more federal dollars. That leaves us about six and a half billion dollars to run the rest of the state on. Our corrections budget is actually, it's, it's a little higher than this. I believe it's just over two billion dollars for corrections. Two billion out of the six is corrections. Schools takes a big chunk. Community mental health takes a huge chunk out of it. So, it's really easy to say, well, you got a $53 million, billion dollar budget, you can come up with 1.2. But so what are we gonna do? Are we gonna cut schools more? Yeah. Are we gonna, yeah. Yeah. are we going to take, you know, that's, that's all, you know, that's, that's all well and good and it sounds good here. We get people constantly complaining about school, school funding, that they're not getting enough. We've got corrections. We let people out of prison early. Yes. And we're going to let people. We're going to let people starve. And we're going to cut back on the state police. I don't think so. Let's let's talk a little about 
the nuts and bolts of the proposal here. And I want to thank you all for attending. And I know I've been told I was walking into the lion's den, and I'm sure that if we raised hands right now, 90% of you would be against this proposal. I hope that you will keep in mind some of the things we're going to talk about here tonight. And some of the things that Mr. Hughes just talked about, he didn't talk a whole lot about roads. He talked about a whole bunch of other issues that nuts and bolts when it comes down to it. We've got to get enough votes in Lansing to get any of those proposals done. And the votes aren't there for many of things. So this is why this is sort of a cobbled together program. So we, when um, we had the Senate program, which was put forward, which was to raise gas taxes, period. And it would have raised them about 20, 22 cents. Let's keep in mind, last year when we were working on this, gas was getting close to $4 a gallon. How many people would have been happy if we would raise gas taxes 20 cents at that time? Nobody in the room is going to be excited about, about that proposal. When we had the, the Bolger plan, the one the House passed, and I voted for, was to take and gradually increase this, the gas tax and get rid of sales tax on gasoline. It really wasn't a good plan because it didn't backfill any of the things that the sales tax on gasoline did. But it was a good bargaining chip against the Senate. Now, when I went door to door last August, talking to all of you people out in the street, I don't know how many thousand doors I banged on, talking to folks. They were all shocked when they found out that the sales tax on gasoline, everything we were paying at the pump, was not going to roads. To a person, nobody liked that. Didn't make sense to me either. Do you know how we have to do that? We have to go through a constitutional change to move the sales, to put sales tax, to raise the sales tax in the state of Michigan. So if we just did away with the sales tax, which we could do on gasoline, that created about an $800 million hole in the budget. Schools, revenue sharing, a variety of miscellaneous programs were going to have to be cut. So to, to transfer those over to get the sales tax to backfill schools, we had to put a constitutional proposal on the ballot. That's what we've got. And a part of that is the horse trading that goes on to get the votes to do that. I know it all sounds so glorious that we can do all this stuff. Well, let's keep in mind, there's 110 legislators, 38 senators, and the governor. And if any one of those three legs on the stool goes no, those things don't happen. A lot of these proposals that Senator Colbeck's put forward, that Tom's put forward, that um, Norm's mentioning, they're not going to get those votes. Those votes are not there. So you do some horse trading. They say two things you should never see in your life. One is how sausage is made, and the other how legislation happens. And it's, it's very true. It's not a pretty process. But now, things didn't happen just out of willy-nilly in the middle of the night. I've sat on transportation for four years, and I've been in favor of a 1% sales tax increase right along. I was always hoping for a clean cut, cut program, 1% for roads, will you vote for it? That's not what we ended up getting. There's the income tax credit. There's a whole variety of other things. Uh, too many for me to mention in the next 10 seconds that I have. Um, you know, I, I, I'm tight with a buck. Girls at my store used to tell me I, I, uh, I squeaked. And I said, no, I'm a little like my Scott grandfather. I want to squeeze every penny until I get a nickel's worth out of it. That hasn't changed. But there's no extra pot of money buried under the carpet in Lansing. There's no extra money up there. Nard mentions the Senate building, $70 million. That's got nothing to do with this proposal. That's the Senate budget money. Each, each department of the legislature gets, gets a, a money to run their office. And if they can save up $70 million to buy their new building, God bless them. But that's not anything that Tom or I, as a legislator, really had a vote on. That's Senate money. So I, I think I'm out of time. Uh, look forward to hearing some questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative Jacobson. So the first question we'll start with is the one you're talking about, Brad, about the uh, the cost and how some of our alternatives 
There were a lot of different questions relative to whether or not we could have just added a 25 cent gallon tax on what we had. Could we have had a dedicated millage that was stri strictly for gas tax and only gas tax and not have other funding? Um, could we have kept the, uh, the tax on the diesel, the, the, uh, the diesel and diverted the money to the roads without going to the voters? So what are other, uh, other options for us to put dollars out there strictly for roads or have kept a funding structure that wouldn't have required a millage election in May. So we'll start with the, the pro side and then we'll go to the con. Um, Dave's gonna sort of keep a time on you so we don't get too far off so we can get through a bunch of these questions. So I'll just be ask you to be respectful of each other's time on that. Okay. Certainly, thank you. Um, there were a number of different proposals that were being looked at um, in the last uh, several years. One of which that was probably one of the most favored plans that we could do without going to voters was to raise the car registration fees. The proposal that was discussed was to raise each car registration free fee by $150 per year, because al almost all the registration fee goes to roads. I register five cars in January. That's 750 bucks out of my pocket, we call the birthday tax. How many people could afford, uh, out of our population, uh, 750 bucks all additional all at one time? Very few, I'd say. Well, not, not everybody has five cars, but here. Would you, would you rather pay perhaps $700 over the course of the year in sales tax, pay it gradually over the course of a year, or pay it all in one fell swoop? Okay, so Tom, do you have a... Sir, sure. you know, the, the Bolger plan that uh, Brad voted on, it wasn't a bad bill. I don't think he would have voted for a bad bill. It was a good bill, and I voted for it as well. It would not have cut schools. It, schools would have, the funding would have gone, instead of going up like this, it would have gone up like this. Only in government is a smaller increase called a cut. So it would have actually guaranteed a minimum that they would never be cut, actually, in the future. So, I mean, there was a lot of things that were good with that. It would have certainly uh, increased the, the spending on roads without taking a dime from our, from our pockets. Now, you know, is that the whole answer? If somebody wanted to make it so that there was a little bit more for roads, well, then, you know, cut some of the corporate welfare that we give out. I mean, you know, the, seven, the $70 million for the Senate, I, you know, if they could come up with that savings, put it to roads. I mean, you know, I, I get offended by the, the scare tactics of the governor. I, like I said, the governor's done good things, but holding up, a, you know, concrete and saying either vote yes or die is the wrong message. We're Republicans. We know how to find money. We did it, uh, it back in when we took uh, control from Granholm. We had to, we cut a billion dollars in one year. They found the money. If Republicans want to find it, they will find it. Um, in regards to additional funding, uh, Mr. Norm was kind enough to suggest that we raise our property taxes here in Oakland County. Thank you, Norm. Uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. As you know, Oakland County is the economic engine for the state of Michigan. A lot of people come to this county to work. So what Mr. Hughes is suggesting, we fix our roads so everybody else can live elsewhere. And we can pay the bill for them. I think this the state of Michigan should be paying the bills for the roads, not Oakland County taxpayers for property taxes. And in regards to Mr. Bolger's plan, my comment on that is that I play dice too. I'd like to gamble once in a while too, and that's what that was. That was a gamble. Because why was it a gamble? Because what they said was, if the money did not come in for the schools, we would take this, we would stop the increase and we would not get the money for the roads. How can you have a construction season if you're proposing that maybe you won't have the money next year. How can you plan fixing your road when you're not going to have the money? You have to have the money to fix the roads. Thank you. Okay, Norm? The uh, Michigan Legislative Commission on Government Efficiency found 53 specific recommendations that would have saved $1.5 billion in gross savings. The State Budget Office came up with 181 ideas that would have cut $2.98 billion from the budget. The Mackinac Center found 35 specific ones they recommended that cut $2.1 billion. There's fat in that budget, and it needs to be reviewed. And I just throwing money at it is not going to get the job done. And, 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 and Brad, I brought you a copy of the Mackinac's recommendations so you can take it back and maybe oh, study it. And, thanks, I <laughs> <laughs> and look at ways you can cut the budget. 
right, so um, when it comes to the, the money that is supposed to go to the roads, who determined that the $1.2 billion was enough to fix our roads? And how do we know that that Who's money this? is um, the, the warranty piece? There's been questions about the, wa the roads being warrantied, that if I'm going to spend this extra money, that I'm not going to end up with a chunk coming out of that road in five years. And the, some of the examples that were given by some people asking questions is the fact that we're redoing some of our local roads. The Telegraph is one example where the roads have already been falling apart after they have been fixed in the, in the recent couple of years. That's so right. how do we know that 1.2 is sufficient, that all that money, when, when it goes to roads, will be the roads will be in good shape for a long period of time afterwards? The, um, and so, Eric, we'll start with you. Let me, the um, state has done, and our majority party has done, I think, two, maybe three studies over the last five years up anywhere from $2 billion to $1.2 over different amounts of money necessary to fix the roads. In regards to that issue, that's, that's what uh, necessary to fix the roads. Uh, that was the one question. Unfixed. And what was the other one? That How you, do they stay fixed so that in five years well, they're not going to fall apart again? If you did a warranty right now on all the, the county roads for Oakland County, 98% of our roads are a warranty. How do warranty right now? And we put in five-year warranties. <laughs> For, for roads, that's what the new plan would be, install five-year warranties on your roads, and then some. Well, you have roads right now that we expect them to last 15 to 20 years in regards to But your roads are not being repaired right now. They're being putting Band-Aids on them. And everybody here knows what happens to Band-Aids. They fall off. And that's what's going on. Okay. Tom? Well, the... Uh you know, 1.2 billion. I, you know, I, I think that it's probably uh, somewhat high. MDOT is notorious for not spending our money very well. And again, this 1.2, 100 million of it will go additional to big empty buses that go around the mass transit. The Auditor General, I was chair of oversight committee, and all of the Auditor General reports came to my committee, and we reviewed them. In the last two months, he's, the Auditor General put out three different studies that have just been an embarrassment and shown that MDOT does not know how to spend our money. And by giving them $1.2 billion, you know what? The spotlight comes off of them. All of a sudden, Lansing goes, up, oh, problem solved, no big deal. Instead, why is it that a third of their warranties, the Auditor General found out, they don't go back to the contractor and tell them to fix it? They just let, the, let it go bad. But, and, and that will, and these issues will go off the table once every, if, if they get a 1.2 billion, nobody will be looking at how the money is being spent. Those rail cars, $12 million are sitting in Owasso, not used. I mean, there is a lot of money that needs to be uh, spent better. And there's certainly, uh, that, the spotlight needs to continue to stay on, uh, stay on how they spend it. Okay, Brad or Norm, do either? I'll, I'll take a shot here. Um, you know, as, as far as the the uh, Auditor General's report on the MDOT, they have done some bonehead things. They, I mean, the, the train cars in Owasso, I mean, you couldn't ask for a bigger black eye right before this proposal comes out, and we're going to have a vote. It was, that was just crazy. Um, the Auditor General did come through and say that they hadn't followed through on all their warranties properly. They hadn't updated all of them. Michigan is actually has more warranties than almost any, I believe, than any other state in the country right now. We were innovative in doing in doing the warranties, but the. All right, so I'm going to ask you to make sure you put your questions on the cards and let and respect the panelists to let them finish their answers. Um, the other comment about how much how much money we're we're putting in the roads and just giving MDOT 1.5, 1.2. Um, the Olson report, former representative uh, Rick Olson, did two reports over three years, looked at those things, and the number came up 1.2 to 1.8. If you look at the proposal, what's set up is 400 the first year, eight, roughly 800 the second year, and 1.2 in the third year, partially trying to make sure that MDOT is able to have those projects shovel ready have the, the uh, bidders out there so there isn't a competition on the bidding, increase the amount gradually, and pay down debt, which the Mackinac Center in their May, March 30th report said it was a great idea to pay down those debts. Okay, great. Norm? I'm going to, uh, uh, I have not seen the shovel ready list other than Oakland County. You certainly have a long one. I have seen that. But in other counties, they don't have that. They, they don't have a clue where they would spend their share of the $469 million at this point. 
Uh, I'm sure they'll find something. They'll, they'll, they're, there are a lot of ways, but there are two other funds out there I think we need to be looking at. The Catastrophic Claims Fund has got $18 billion in it, $540 million a year in just interest that could be applied to this. That's improving health if the roads are better. So the, cast, the catastrophic, that's, that's one. And the other one, I, I believe, um, uh, you know, you, you look at all the other, other spending, uh, you know, $500 million on movie credits, lost 104 jobs. I mean, there's just so much fat. There's so much fat, at least comparatively. Now, maybe in, in the $53 billion, it's only 7 or $8 billion, but it's significant. And it should be found. Eric, you... Excuse me. Seven or eight billion is what we use to run the state. That's not fat. That's what's run the state general fund money. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Eric. No, um, and I and I heard this comment, Norman, and I appreciate that comment. I've heard about that issue about the catastrophic insurance fund. I'm not happy about over the last 45 years or so having to pay that into my insurance, and no, and I don't think anybody here is happy about that. But my wife and I have paid that money for insurance, for catastrophic health, not for some schmo to take it and pay for roads. It's for my health if I have a serious accident. Now, the other, and, and I do, the, I'm a legal, I'm an attorney by trade, so I tell you right now, you're going to end up a lot of litigation over that issue. Okay, so we're going to go to the next question. Um, and it has to do with the additional costs that go along with this, as in that the taxpayers are going to be bearing the burden of this cost. It, um, they lose their discretionary income by having to pay additional taxes. And then as the businesses have to pay higher transportation taxes because of the gas tax, that cost will be passed on to the taxpayers. So how does the state um, hope that they're going to actually generate more money from a sales tax increase when it could be that the burden of that tax will decrease spending instead? So we'll start with the no side. Yeah, we, we proved in the Reagan administration a lack of curve works. You reach a point where you start taxing so much that people quit working, and they quit producing, and they quit pro providing more jobs. So it, it's going to have a real dire effect. This 17% increase in sales tax is going to have a big effect. And uh, it, it, it's going to cost us jobs, and it's going to cost us government revenue. When more people work, more people pay taxes, the smaller slice of the bigger pie makes more government revenue. So we've got to quit doing things that are disincentive to work. Sure. Um, I'd like to note that Norm mentioned the 17% sales tax. Um, if you go from 6 to 7%, I guess it is 17%, but people are getting really misled when they get some of the flyers and the information saying that we're getting a 17% sales tax. It's really not. It may be a 17, we go from 6 to 7, but it's not a 17% sales tax. As far as the, the, the roads go, you talk to any of the economic development people, uh, from Oakland County, from MEDC, from around the state, from any of the organizations, Michigan roads are an embarrassment. And when businesses come to Michigan to look and build a new factory, move here, relocate, they don't want to come here. They look at our roads and say, geez, you know, this is ridiculous. They can't keep the roads in shape. How, why would we want to open our business up here? We're going to have more economic input from those companies coming in if our roads and our infrastructure is better. They're going to be more likely to come to town, open up a factory, and create more jobs. Well, I mean, as Republicans, we know that uh, you know bigger government taking more out of our pockets is not a good thing. It's it is going to you know a, a higher um, sales tax is on the margins going to cause less uh, people to travel here. Um, you know, I don't know. There is Illinois is not eight percent or that that one slide. We would become the second highest. In the nation now, some some states allow counties to to uh, have their own uh, taxes as well, and so that's where you get kind of mixed messages. But uh, California has eight; we would have seven, uh, along with some other states. And you know, we you know, as Senator Kobik says, there's only one other group that uh, measures uh, cost per body, and that's the mafia. Uh, if you look at cost per mile. Uh, we are one of the top, we're in the top 20 in the nation on cost per mile, and yet we have them some of the worst roads. And again, this is an area where we need the spotlight on how we're spending the money, and we can find the money. Uh, it's much more than $7 billion. It's much more than the $10 billion in uh, general fund. There's also another uh, $19 billion in the restricted fund. That's restricted by statute, 
And the House Republicans said, we're going to go after that and look at the restricted fund and make sure that we can unrestrict it with a simple majority vote. So there's plenty of money there. It's not just $10 billion. And that $10 billion used to be 8.3 just a few years ago when the governor came into office. So uh, that additional money went somewhere every year as well. Eric, please um, use the microphone. These Stay in Michigan. If if you can't get out of your driveway and drive to your where you're going, you're not going to be able to have a job. Your job and your ability to work is going to be slim. You've got to have safe roads to get out of your driveway and get to your get to your job. And that's really what I'm concerned about is the, the roads. Thank you. So there was also a lot of comments from the audience relative when you talked about education funding and how much money of this proposal will actually go to the schools. Um, some of the questions that we have here are concerned about how much money is being spent on schools, whether we're getting a good return on that investment. Um, have we done, as Norm's uh, charts showed, that we've been spending a lot more money given the, the uh, decreasing student enrollment numbers that he showed, and how do we know that the money that's going to be part of this proposal going into the schools is actually going to go there, that we will see a $200 per pupil increase even here in the Orient School District? How do, how do we know that this is all going to be dedicated to the school the districts and that we are going to see an improvement in education and that that money that's being spent is being spent well on schools? It's a lot of them. So, Norm. Well, uh, the this, this school budget went up, state school budget went up $1.1 billion over the last three years. The Senate Fiscal Agency issued a report December 19th of last year saying that the school aid fund is going to go up $2.1 billion over the next three years and the general fund is going up $2.1 billion over the next three years. So automatically we have a built-in increase because of the great job that Brad and, and, and the governor has done in terms of spurring the economy and we, we worked on freedom to work. They're going to have $4.2 billion of additional money in those two funds over the next three years. And it goes on beyond that as the economy gets better. There's just, who controls the fund? You control the fund, the local school board. And uh, you're the ones that have to decide how the money is spent. You're the ones that are going to have to hold the union's feet to the flame. Okay. Brad? As far as the, the monies to the schools out of the, the existing, the new proposal, uh, there's approximately 250, 300 uh, million dollars more for schools in those programs. Um, there is no set, cut and dried guarantee that it's going to go to K-12. It will go to education. The funds that's set up would go either through K-12 or to community colleges. Right now, the state is spending more money in community colleges to retrain our employees. We've got a lot of jobs out there, but the, our workforce doesn't necessarily have the proper skills. So more and more money is going into community colleges and retraining st uh, students who left high school with less than stellar skills, perhaps. So the money is go is going in into an education oriented, but I couldn't say for sure that it's going to go two hundred dollars to each school district. So we don't know that two hundred will come back to the Orient School District per people. I I don't believe that has been uh, determined specifically. Well, I, I mean, as far as school spending, I um, back in my first year, we were in the minority, but I was able to get um, through the help of with uh, the help of uh, Mike Bishop um, requirement that there is some transparency, not much. Uh, you know, you have to say anybody that's making over a hundred thousand dollars in the schools. If you go online, there's now a transparency. Um, you know, link. Uh, so there is some transparency, but I think in order to know how the spending is, you need checkbook, online checkbooks for all school districts. And I've been pushing that. I think that uh, they could save a, they could save, <laughs> they could save two hundred and fifty million dollars a year, like Norm said, if they got rid of prevailing wage. Schools, uh, th what they spend on uh, on buildings, and two hundred million dollars additional for roads uh, if we get r got rid of prevailing wage. And also, they still have defined benefit plans. You know, everybody else has defined contribution plans in, in Michigan, but, uh, you know, in the schools, they, there would be a large amount of savings. And we had an opportunity a couple years ago, but the governor kind of uh, chose a different route and to keep the defined benefit. But, I mean, there are plenty of ways to make sure that we got more money to the classroom if we wanted to do that without taking more money out of our pockets. Right. Yeah. Uh, prevailing wage has come up several times. I've sponsored prevailing wage language all three of my terms, uh, we probably got the best chance of getting it past this term 
uh, which can save us money on non-federal programs. If it's federal money that's used, you have to do prevailing wage uh, with it. It's a part of the Davis-Bacon Act. Um, as far as education funding, I think there's one other point we need to bring up about education funding. And I'll admit it's gone up. But where a lot of it's gone, a tremendous amount of it, is in state spending towards paying down teacher pensions. The pensions and health care of our school districts it, uh, a few years ago was getting close to 50% of every dollar was going to health care and retirement for teachers. The states put a lot of money into that to pay down the debt. And as the governor's famous for saying, be really good to be a governor in Michigan in 2038 because we'll have almost all of our debts paid off and because we've been working to pay down those obligations. So a lot of the education funding has gone there. Yes, no. I, I, I know I spoke to this, but it's important to note that one of the accompanying bills here changes the school aid formula and takes higher ed out of it. So that has to be funded in another fashion. So K through 20 actually gets another bump, a double bump, the $300 million they're going to allocate increasing with inflation, plus the additional amount they would get, that, that amount that would have normally been applied to higher ed. And there are 118 administrators in Michigan for every 100 teachers. So um, some of the bills that they're talking about, there's additional bills that will go into effect when this ta if the sales tax proposal passes. The primer that Joanne put together that was a handout for tonight lists all of those different bills and tells you information about each one of those so that when you pa if this passes, each one of those bills would go into effect and change around some of those funding formulas. Um, the next question has to do a lot with the support or lack thereof from our elected officials and who is paying for all of the information. So we've had some very noteworthy elected officials come out and say they don't support this ballot proposal. Yet we have the governor and others uh, out there actively uh, supporting it. There is a lot of money being spent on the pro side for this event. Who is who is paying for the, pro, the vote yes efforts, and what efforts do we have on the, the vote no side other than having panelists come out and talk to voters? Well, look, I mean, it's no, no secret that the, you know, the road building uh, lobby is, is funding millions of dollars. And, you know, they, they don't, like I said, they don't want the spotlight on spending. They don't want to, they want to just get that money in out of your pocket and then forget about this issue and not have to worry about actually what would happen if this goes down. Then all of a sudden, the legislature is going to turn and focus on how they're spending the money. And they know they're not spending it well in many instances. So, you know, they don't want that. They're spending a lot. Here in Orion Township, you probably belong to Michigan Township Association. They kicked them in $100 million. If I were you guys, I'd go to your township and say, we need to withdraw from uh, the MTA because they're funding this as well. Uh, and then, you know, the, the House uh, approved this. I don't know if you got the mailer, but it was very deceptive. And it was paid for by taxpayer dollars. I don't know if Brad sent it out. But, you know, on the opposing, <laughs> opposing passage, uh, it doesn't mention that the, the arguments for the opponents say the money is there was not one of them. They list a few, but it's not, there, it doesn't talk anything uh, about the fact that our main argument is the money is there in the $53 billion or the $30 billion that's non-federal or the $10 billion that is a general fund. And so, I, yeah, it is. There's a lot of government spending on this, and we should all be outraged. Okay. Brad? Um, I don't know how Tom knows how, where the money's coming from for the different funding programs, because most of that's not public information. There, there are private organizations that are lining up to do much of it. Some of it is, some of it's not. As far as the flyer Tom mentions, he knows darn well uh, how these are all done. We do these on, from the legislature, from the Senate and the House, on pretty much every ballot proposal that comes out. There's a pro-con piece done. They were offered and sent out for all the representatives, and I believe the senators have a similar piece. The language pro and con pieces are looked at by attorneys for both sides to agree on the wording so it is considered to be neutral wording. Tom knows how this goes. He's been sent them out before with his name on it under, on, for other issues. So it's not any big surprise. It's not a big scandal. It's nothing... It's, it's standard procedure that Tom's office was right next to mine. I was vice chair under Tom for uh, uh, ethics uh, oversight and reform. 
I agree with many of his stances, and I'm hearing the messages from, from you folks out here that I see every day and talk to that they don't like the way it's come down. It's, it's a cumbersome proposal. But here again, to get rid and change the tax structure around so everything we pay at the pump, this is what was worked out. Okay, well, so wait, I, I've got to say that, you know, um, when he said that both sides, the, the con side was not asked to uh, review this. When you say both sides, the Democrats and Republicans both approve it. That's true. But the Democrats uh, gladly supported this whole proposal. They weren't very objective. And uh, I, know rep I know legislators that saw this as being deceptive and refused to send it out because they didn't want to see their voters. Okay. So um, one of the questions that's come in asked about the constitutional piece. Uh, we have this ballot proposal that's asking us to change the Constitution to increase our sales tax, but a lot of other funding pieces you've said are constitutionally bound that we can't change. Are there things, other parts of our state constitution that we could change that would free up the funding mechanism in the state without asking for a sale for an increase in taxes, but actually give the legislature more latitude to be able to uh, adjust the budget appropriately? So, Norm, we'll start. Well, the, the Environmental Trust has hundreds of millions of dollars in it, probably several billion dollars. And basically what they're doing is buying up more private land for parks that then they stop people from using. You know, you can't go on with a recreational vehicle, snowmobiles, and so on. So they're buying more and more property, which takes that off the tax rolls, which makes those of us who have, you know, it, it, fewer and fewer payers for it. The Environmental Trust Fund is a big one, and I, and I think that's one that we definitely ought to go at. Um, there are uh, three or four others that I, 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 for example, Brad, I think, misstated himself. Uh, we can get two out of the six cent sales tax converted without, uh, by legislation to roads. We don't have to do constitutional change for that. So there's something even within that where they could get two out of the 6% being collected at the pumps and apply that to roads right now without a constitutional change or a vote of the people. All right, Brad? Well, you're gonna have to look at, at change. I've told many folks this, there's, there's two sides to every story. In Lansing, there's 14 sides to every story. <laughs> and there's all kinds of different options to, to do many of these, these different things. The Natural Resources Trust Fund that, that Norm mentioned, uh, I believe there's 500 million in it, and then the, the next 500 million goes into another Natural Resources Trust Fund. We had that as a public vote a number of years ago to create that. So the money that from the, uh, oil extraction, oil and gas extraction on state properties goes into that fund. When that gets to about another 400 million in it, then it, some of it kicks over into the general fund. But that would take a public vote to change that, to utilize those funds to get into there. Um, there's, a, there's a variety of different funds that we could try to tap into. Um, there's there's a, a fund to clean up leaking underground storage tanks at abandoned gas stations. There's like $25 million in that. We looked at take, that was one of the things I looked at years ago to see if we could work into that. Everybody I talked to said, you know, that's that doesn't make sense. And you know, it's an environmental thing, clean up tanks. That's good, but there's lots of little nickel and dime things, but you've gotta try to get things that are gonna gain enough legs to pass in the legislature. So yeah, and that's part of the problem, is getting those good sounding programs to buy, for people to buy into them from the UP, from the west side of the state, right. and around. Po politics is all about this. Can you count 56 votes, 20 votes in the Senate, and one vote by the, the governor? If you can't get the votes, no matter how great your idea is, if your leadership isn't enough to give you those votes, then you're just talking. You're not going to get it done. If you elect people to try and get this done, and this is what we have today. Now, I know that I'm not happy with it, and I know you folks aren't happy with it, but we want Oakland County Road Commission, we want to fix your roads the best we can. We want to make sure that we plow the snow, Put the soil down and fix the roads. Okay, so well, Eric, I'm gonna. I'm well, I wanted to because I had the proposal last term uh, with regard to the national Res or natural Re resource trust fund, and it would put in about 100 million dollars more uh, if if we went to the vote of the people. It would have uh, 
you know, kept a large amount uh, still in there. But Norm's right. I mean, it's really buying property, taking it off the property rolls, tax rolls. And, you know, we own, if you see a picture of, uh, you know, a map of how much the state and the feds own, it's, it's, a, it's atrocious. I mean, I, they just, we're continuously buying. And, you know, this, if this continues, uh, you know, it's just gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a large amount. But also, you know, there's a sense, I was there during those last two years of Grand Hall when things were really tough in Michigan, and there was a, a desire to find money anywhere. Remember, she had six-day furloughs of state employees. It saved $25 million every time she did it. And she was doing that because she had to find money. That's the mentality that we need to have is, you know, this is a big deal, this is serious, let's go and find the money. And if they want to find it, they, they will. All right, so then we'll go into the uh, plan B questions. There's been a number of questions that say, all right, so the sales tax fails in May. Uh, we've had a lot of different discussions about what happens if there will be one. The governor said there isn't one. There's a lot of legislators who've got other proposals out there, but we still need to be able to count our votes. What, what is plan B? Well, certainly Plan B, uh, you know, can be several areas. I mean, I, I hope that Brad's not going to say, if it fails, I'm not going to do anything. I mean, I think he will work hard to try and get roads funded, you know? And, I, and the governor said that, too. He said, you know, if, if it fails, I'm going to work hard with the legislature. Uh, Senate, uh, the Senate Majority Leader said, if it fails, we're going to, you know, not have a three-month vacation. We're actually going to work for our full-time uh, pay. Um, you know, so, I mean, they are going to... Uh, the Bolger plan is a starting could be a starting point. It certainly said that we get rid of the six percent off of the say, off of uh, gas and put it uh, you know put it to roads. It was revenue neutral. It did increase the gas tax and it and it got rid of the sales tax. That's a starting. If if schools if there's a desire to have a little bit more for schools, like I said, you can do some cutting. Colbeck has Senator Colbeck has an option uh, B, C, and D. Uh, that talks about extending the life of the roads, uh, you know, prioritizing, freezing all other spending. I mean, you know, there's, there's plenty of uh, various plans that will be proposed. Nobody's going to, they want to get reelected, so they're going to figure out a way. If kid, the governor has really upped this ante. He said that kids are dying if we don't do this. So, you know, this will be on the table, and they will need to get this done, uh, even if they have to forego a uh, three-month summer vacation. Eric? My only comment is that if it fails and we hear all these other ideas proposed, that you recognize that there is a need and the amount that needs to be spent is not canceling the, uh, the motion picture industry uh, subsidy, the $50 million. That should have been gone a long time ago, but that's just another issue. But the cost of the roads necessary, and I, I think a lot of people uh, have sometimes have a problem grasping that. I know I did, that it's so expensive. But it, it's one point two billion dollars just to maintain and just to keep them good, and that's what we want. We want to keep them good. But they're only putting in four hundred million this first year. Yes, so but be, you know what? Okay. In, in, when you pay down a debt, that allows you money to to increase later on. We here as taxpayers or as homeowners, anytime we have extra money and we can make a, a, a large sum or an extra payment on our mortgage or on a debt or our credit card debt, we do that. I don't know about you, but I do that if I have that extra money. And that allows you then have extra money later on. That's what you do right. when you have that money to pay your debts off. So as part of these uh, viable alternatives, uh, there's been some questions about you know, we cross the border between Michigan and Ohio, and you can feel the difference in the roads when you cross over. You always know when you're home in Michigan because you start feeling the roads again. So why doesn't Michigan just borrow Ohio's funding structure for roads and say, all right, if this fails, we're going to use Ohio's plan and put that funding structure into place and use the Ohio gas tax because the Ohio, not only do they seem to have better roads, but their gas is cheaper. So why don't we use Ohio's plan? So well, the, the Ohio does not have a sales tax on its gas, 6% sales tax on its gas. It has a flat 28 cents a gallon plus the federal tax. And lo and behold, we use the same type of gravel they use in Ohio. We don't use different gravel. We have the same Federal Highway Administration specs that they use in Ohio, but they have had a higher gas tax for the last 30 years. Lower, higher, much higher than Michigan's. And they have been repairing their roads. And I gotta give them credit, they are better because they pay, spend the money on their roads. Their gas tax has been higher. 
They had, do not have a sales tax at the pump. And that's why their gas is cheaper. Their gas is cheaper, though. All right. Because you don't have a sales tax. Okay, so we're... 28 percent. No, 28 no, cents. 28, no, 28, 28 cents, respond Jack. respond back to their questions, okay? We have to do it on parts. Okay. Jack, I'll let you ask the questions as follow-up after the event's over. Tom. Well, I mean, you know, as far as the, the alternatives, it's not going to be uh, an e it's not going to be easy. But you know, we pay them. So you know, they're they're the you know, there's only four uh, legislative bodies or four states that have full time legislatures. I mean, we pay Jesus. them. This is the main job: is the budget, is prioritizing. It's uncomfortable. They're going to have to say no. These programs are not as valuable as saving kids' lives with roads. And that, right. that is going to be wild. tough. People don't like to hear that this program mm -hmm. is not as valuable as that one. But that is what we pay them to do. <laughs> and that is what we need them to do. And that's what they will do uh, if they want to get reelected uh, once this uh, fails. So I, you know, I think that um, I, I've had debates on Facebook with uh, lobbyists, the MEA lobbyists and others. And uh, they say, you know, it's just going to be too difficult. It is going to be tough. And we're going to need, I'm, I'm assuming Brad is going to be there championing some tough decisions. And we need to be supporting people like Brad and others when they're making those tough decisions. But that's what we pay for them to do, and that's what they need to do with our money. of one-off questions here that I'll hopefully we can get some quick answers to. What is the current funding for public mass transportation with the old numbers and the current proposed is a hundred and thirty million? Do we know what the old numbers are? I don't run any buses. I don't know anything okay. about buses. I mean I, I know that it, you know an additional uh, 100 million will go to mass transit if this passes. Uh, what their budget is right now, I mean, the MDOT budget is 3.5 billion. Uh, 1.5 billion, and that's annual, 1.5 billion is federal money. So they put in, they get about 2 billion in revenue right now. That comes from the 19 cents gas tax mainly. Um, and then, but 15% of that gets skimmed off for uh, mass transit, for trails, for administration, and then the 85% gets split up uh, according to Act 51. The, uh, it, it, it's the, the reason why you can't answer that real quickly is because it's so deceptive. I mean, a lot of the money we did to bail out Detroit is to pay for the M5 creation. You know, they, no, it's the, not. Uh, uh, sure it is. No, it's Some not. of the money is directed directly to mass transit. Uh, now, I, I gave you uh, three studies, 1.5 billion, 2.98 billion, 2.1 billion, I mean, one of them was by the state budget office. They did themselves four years ago. It hasn't been implemented. So I mean, you know, the state itself knows there's places to cut. But how much goes exactly in mass transit? I, I, you know, maybe Brad has better numbers. I, it's the. Uh, this is a. Uh, you know, some of you probably have heard about PA 51, Public Act 51. It's the the flow chart of how the money gets fun, uh, transportation dollars. It's three pages, and this is the abridged version of PA 51. The Comprehensive Transportation Fund, which is buses, airports, uh, rail, is 100 and, 167 in round numbers. Uh, million, million, million. Wouldn't be billion. Yeah, 100, 167 million dollars a year for the Comprehensive Transportation Fund which goes in there. Now there are, as Norm mentioned, there are a whole variety of other things that get funding out of here. There's some funding goes to the DNR. We pay, we buy gas for our four wheelers, for our boats, for our motorcycles to ride trails. Some of the money goes into this fund. Tom uses the word skimmed off. I don't necessarily agree with that. It's an inflammatory term that we, we, we hear, we hear it, it, all the time with these things. But there are a whole variety of different areas where this fund, these funds get divided off based on the Secretary of State gets some because they collect the registration, so they get a percentage of the money for handling the paperwork. It's a whole variety of those things here in PA 51. Public Act 51 has been amended probably 30 to 40, numerous times since it was passed in 1951, numerous times. Okay. Um, what is the timetable for when funds for the roads will be allocated on a per, per year basis? Because we we hear this 1.2 and 800 million is going to fund uh, the uh, debt reduction and 400 million and, and shifting back and forth. Is that a, a realistic uh, 
timetable for us to finally, in three years, get 1.2 billion additional dollars compared to what's already allocated in the state fund balance, or are we going to see this is only dollars and the money that's currently in the budget will be shifted other places? The, the money that's in this, the state transportation budget, I would fully expect will not be shifted or taken off whatsoever. Okay. We, need, we need the dollars we've got there. The, here again, if the proposal passes in, in next month, the, um, the state will start collecting and getting those revenues next fall. It'll be next fall's budget. We will have, because of the, um, the guarantee of the money coming in, there may be some short-term <laughs> loans taken out to get construction underway this season and get some more of that money in there. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be 400 the first year with 860 roughly putting away debt that we pay about, uh, I think it's around $200 million a year in debt. The second year, uh, it'll go 860 approximately to roads, 400 to debt. In the third year, it'll get the full 1.2. Mm -hmm. And I guess let's just uh, make, it, make it clear that there's $800 million uh, in the rainy day fund. And so, you know, a lot of that, you know, we can have just as much money go to roads um, this year, even with a no vote, because they've got the money. Uh, you know, Granholm ran the, the, the state or tried to run the state. She didn't do a very good job, obviously, with $2 million in the rainy day fund. Uh, you know, we've got $800 million, So, I mean, there's uh, money to make sure that they can allocate. If it goes down and they want to, you know, fix the, the bridges that are real bad, um, you know, they can certainly allocate it from the rainy day fund. And also, I suspect they will work all summer, like they said, to make sure that they're uh, cutting corporate welfare in other areas. Um, and I bet the Senate will rethink their uh, Senate building as well. The uh, rainy day fund, if, Tom, you can try to help me out with this. When, when Snyder took over, when we took over the House and Senate the governorship in 10, the rainy day fund was depleted so low, two million. Two, it was under $2 million, and that was enough to run the state for 30, 38 minutes, I think it was. 38 minutes is all we had left in our reserves. So when you look at the state budget, we're paying down debt, we're trying to save, save money where we can in the rainy day fund. Tom's been part of that, as I have. So, you know, we're trying to be good stewards of the public dollar. Well, actually, I, I didn't like having such a large amount because, uh, you know, when Granholm didn't have much, she actually looked in for areas to cut and uh, do furloughs and stuff. So, you know, there's, there's a debate there. Should it be back in the p taxpayers' pockets? Should they have, you know, if they have too much? I think that all, all I wanted to say was if this goes down the next day, they could allocate $400 million, which is exactly what they were going to go if uh, Proposal 1 passes. They could allocate $400 million the following day and, and do the roads just like they would have done this, this current year. And they can solve the, uh, the, the tough uh, issues. They have a, a whole year to do it. Okay. So we've had some, uh, one of the questions uh, come in about the new internet sales tax and how that might have a positive impact for the state. But then we've also heard, st heard stories about the tax credits that corporations are due mm -hmm. if, um, if they decide they want to turn in their, their marker that says, hey, give me my tax credit. So what are the, pro the pieces of the internet sales tax helping us and these tax credit to corporations hurting us? And how does that impact the overall budget and our ability to fund this from our, from our general fund? So, you know, yeah. I'm not in the state house, but I would tell you, $9 billion tax credit given out by Gra Governor Granholm and Engler over the past to the big three, and they come back to collect. Uh, that takes a lot of gall. And when we, we need this money for roads, we need it for all the other services, and they want to come back and, and get this. So I'm not sure how the state legislature is going to address this. But I, for one, am not in favor of giving them this $9 billion in tax credit today. Uh, there's litigation for you. Well, you're, you're right, there is. Um, the, the mega credits that were given out primarily to the big three, but to automotive suppliers primarily uh, during the Grand Home and part of the Engler administration, were basically a contract written between the state of Michigan and the individual companies, and basically an individual factory in the company that said for the Orion plant, we're going to maintain so many employees. And if the state maintains, or the uh, company maintains that many employees, they can uh, take a credit off their income tax for X amount of dollars. 
And they did that for different contracts, for different factories, for different years. There's hundreds and hundreds of those contracts out there. And each one of them is an individual contract. So there's no easy felled swoop to come through and say, we're going to change this. It's going to be a matter of the, in the governor's office, and they're looking at how they can revamp some of those right now. But it, it's, it's an ugly proposition that's going to be out there that those companies, now that they're making money at the auto companies pretty well, they can take and turn those credits in and not have to pay tax to the state of Michigan. I would, I would point out that uh, in the last four years, we've increased the number of credits. If you do hydroponics, if you have a farm, you, you know, you, there, there's, there's uh, uh, the uh, tax breaks for the uh, rail system in Detroit. Uh, if you work on Cobo Hall, you don't, do you have tax credits? It's just, it goes on and on and on, the additional credits that we put on in just the last four years and increase them. But one thing that's coming off is uh, a lot of the windmill credits and other so-called environmental uh, credits are coming off. And there'll be a big fight. The governor wants to increase those again and wants to, it, you know, in, increase the uh, credits for them. And we're going to have to fight that one. I mean, Reagan said, if you can't make them see the light, make them feel the heat. And that's what we have to do. We have to make our legislators know that enough is enough. Brad, the, the numbers will change when there's enough pressure put on the legislature to see the light. So at I mean, this point, and I, I, uh, I certainly fought those that corporate welfare. As a matter of fact, I was denied the ability to speak uh, by the Democrat uh, speaker uh, when I was trying to fight. There was a hundred million. Tim Skubik wrote an article about it. There was a hundred million dollars to alternative energy. A lot of those, I don't know if it, it, not all of it's the big three. There's at least there's hundreds of millions to these alternative energy companies. Some that have gone belly up that we gave them a ton of money. Uh, but you know there is um, and and also M MEDC rewrites their contracts. I mean, we know the governor, uh, Governor Granholm, she governed by press release. I mean, every month she said, you know, we created 10,000 jobs. They didn't. There were people that promised it. But then when they didn't come through with those jobs, they rewrote the contract and gave them the money anyway. I saw this time and time again. So here's another area where Lansing should be putting a spotlight. All of this should be on the table. That $9 billion that Eric says, uh, you know, shouldn't be given out. Well, there's some money. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be all $9 billion. There's probably would be a lot of litigation, but maybe $100 million, maybe $500 million. That's what their job is, and that's what they're going to do or need to do, or we should demand that they do if, once we uh, vote this down. Uh, if, if I could for just a second. Those are diff the ones for the energy credits, for the battery companies. Those are different credits. Those are a different type of deal than what was done for the mega credits for the auto companies. Mm -hmm. So given the time, what I want each of you was told we would let you do closing comments. We're going to do the closing comments in reverse order. So we'll start with Brad, then go to Norm, then Eric, and Tom, you'll be the last. All okay. right? So sure. Brad. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, as you can see, it's a confusing and complex issue. There's all kinds of different angles to it. It wasn't taken lightly. I've been on the uh, Transportation Committee for four years, just starting my fifth year in the legislature. Tom served six, his six years and was done in December. We both tried to see different ways to do this, different ways to save money on whatever it might be, different ways to spend money more efficiently, different ways to fix the roads. Um, you know, we, a joke, you know, we've been kicking the can down the road. Last time there was an increase was 97. So it tells you how long they've been working at trying to come up with a method to do it. We've been kicking the can down the road, and the joke is you can't kick it anymore because it's fallen too deep in the hole. So this was a proposal, and I know there's been round criticism. The legislature didn't do its job. We did our job. We came up with a proposal and a plan. You got, don't like it, okay. But that was the proposal and the plan, the compromise that was made to get a proposal out there. Like it, don't like it, whatever the case may be. What are we going to do next? There's all kinds of proposals out there, most of which don't have legs and won't go anywhere. We, we can look at them, we can try, we can take and pick and choose little bits and pieces. But you know, people don't like this proposal because it's complex and there's, lot, there's 10 or 11 bills. Those aren't going to be any easier uh, amending and changing those. There's nothing easy about what we've been trying to do in Lansing to, to fix the roads. And to 
throw a whole variety of other budgetary issues up there on the wall, I don't think really necessarily serves the needs of, of the public for the roads. It throws a whole bunch of other smoke and mirrors up and gets everybody all excited, rah, rah, rah. But it doesn't have, if it doesn't have legs, if you, as Eric says, you can't count the votes, it isn't going to happen. And I'm, you know, we're going to keep working at it. We're going to see. We put uh, close to $600 million from increased sales tax revenues because of sales. We, we've been doing better with our economy in Michigan. In the last couple of years, we've put a lot of money into, into roads. But how long is that going to last? And how, and how long is it going to take us to get to a point where we can put $1.2 billion in a year? You know, we're struggling to put 500 or 600 in. So I, I thank you all for your consideration. Um, please realize it's, it's not an easy fix. And, um, you know, I, I hear the message every day, we don't want to pay more taxes. I'm just not sure where else we're going to come up with the money. But I'll be sure and look at the list that Norm gave me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much for coming tonight and for caring so much. Uh, I remember back in the 70s when uh, I visited my friends in the legislature, and there were four of them sharing a secretary in a cubicle behind the Capitol. It's now gotten to the point where they both have Taj Mahal's, both the House and the Senate, and they're not good enough. They're going for another 70 or $80 million one. Um, and, and the staff has grown, two, three staffers per legislator. Um, we've raised up a class of princes that are, think, I believe, the mindset is when they go there, they're so much superior to those of us who are working to pay for it all. And um, there's plenty of money, it has to be reprioritized. And I, I, I you know, I, I wished I had the resources, maybe one of you will pony up the money. I'd like to go to the polls on election day with our own proposal to tell them how to do it, to instruct them how to do it. Repeal prevailing wage, cut out MEDC, uh, uh, you know, capital, crony capitalism, cut out the, uh, uh, the uh, movie credits, uh, uh, you know, maybe go to a part-time legislature. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe eliminate uh, lame duck sessions, although we got freedom to work pass through it. But there, there are ways in which we have to realistically look at this as if it's our money. When I was in the Reagan administration, I cut $1 billion out of a $1.8 billion budget the first year. There is fat. It's a matter of prioritizing, and it's a matter of thinking every penny you spend as a legislator or a bureaucrat is something that has to be taken from somebody, because government has no money that isn't taken from us. And you should spend it the same way as you spend your household income. And I would ask Brad, I would challenge Brad, I would be willing to help Brad in terms of looking at places in the budget. We've asked to be able to do that to both the governor and both the last two speakers, saying we would come up with a task force, a blue ribbon committee, that would be able to look at this budget in detail, every contract, and trace it back to an appropriation and a constitutional provision, just like the Grace Commission did that helped us cut so much in the Reagan administration. It can be done, and it, it's, it's a matter of the will, and I encourage you to have the will. Eric? Well, I'm, I'm not here to talk about uh, what's being done at the state. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Road Commission. It's my chance to talk a little about the Oakland County Road Commission. When I came on in 07, we had 556 employees. We now are down 160. We reduced that employee down 160 people. As you know, we have as many employees now as we had in 1962. Now, you know, back then, most of you here were alive then, right? <laughs> And at that time, we had a population in Oakland County of around 600,000. We now have a population double that, and we have double the amount of roads. We're doing the best we can with 356 people right now, or 360 people, excuse me. We've changed our pension plan to a defined contribution plan. We've privatized all kinds of different jobs and activities that we do, which is what you should do. As a good Republican, you look at that and you privatize. We've gone out and, and uh, required, before the state was even involved, required warranties. But as I indicated to you before, 98% of our roads are out of warranty. Um, we will continue at the Road Commission to do the job with the resources we don't have. All right? I mean, that's, that's basically what's going on. 
And I want to thank you for, for giving us a chance to, to talk to you tonight. You'll make your own intelligent decision. There's a lot of ideas out there, and as Brad said, it's all about county. There is nothing else in front of us that has had 56 votes, 20 votes in the Senate, and the governor's signature. And, and that's the reality. I mean, I would like to be able to say, hey, we're just going to have a 17 cent increase in the gas tax and we'll fix your roads. But that, unfortunately, is not what we have. And, and will we, and like I get back to the first problem I gave you, nobody here has, or everybody here, again, everybody here has un, or a healthy distrust of politicians. We all do, right? And that includes me, right? And everybody well, up here at the table. We've all been politicians at one point. Yeah, <laughs> we're all, we're all, um, yeah. But you, you distrust them so bad, you want to send the piece of legislation back to them and hope to God they give us a better piece of legislation. Well, that's what you hope. But remember, sometimes you get what you don't hope for. So, Tom. All right, well, only in Lansing could, you know, the House version um, in December was zero uh, additional money out of your pocket. The Senate's version was $1.2 billion out of your pocket. Only in Lansing could they go behind closed doors and come up with a compromise that it takes $2 billion out of your pocket. Yes, this proposal is extremely complex and confusing. 46,000 words would go in, uh, into effect. $800 uh, for an average family of four uh, every year would come out of our pockets. Uh, the money is there. Uh, I will tell you, just before the elections in 2012 and 2014, the House and Senate found money to put to roads. They put an additional about $500 million, um, and it mainly went to areas that they thought had competitive races. Uh, it went into those districts. How about that? Uh, but they found the money, and that was without any difficult decisions. There was nobody saying we had to cut this to do that. The money is there. Let's just make sure we vote no and have them do their job. Yeah.